you know, I, it, are they too close to the project to not quite, you know, get it the way that pros do? Because, you know, they direct the game. They have so much that they know about the game that we don't even get to experience as a player. You know, they're, that, that's often the case. Um, from my experience with uh, Shibori-san, though, it seems like he really does understand the game and he knows what the players want out of that. Well, then I look forward to seeing that uh, ex exhibition match after the fact. But here we go. We have Martis using Hayate and Matt using Tina. Looks like Hayate has the advantage here. Ooh, that wall damage didn't do enough to kill her. No, but we are seeing lots of air throws out of uh, Matt Black here. So this oh, is Oh, very is nice good. slow animation there on the finish. Hayate now 1-0. Oh, here we go. A little offensive hold. You and don't see those too often. No, and that's Chris that is Tina's bread and butter. She is a grapple character. Oh, wow. We've seen those three low kicks again. I'm, sh I'm sure in the last match somebody saw, huh, this is effective. We actually started. <laughs> you know, this uh, this style is more similar to uh, actually Rockman Pet from yesterday. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do remember that. I mean, we're seeing those air throws again, so hopefully... At least, at least we're not seeing an extensive amount of Hitomi. Oh, here we go again with another low offensive hold. You do not see that very often. That's, that's no. actually really impressive. And you know, what's interesting is that, you know, he, he's, he's being extremely aggressive for somebody using Tina. Yeah, I mean, with Tina, you normally have to play a little bit careful, try to go on whip punishment, defense, um, and actually right there, you just saw him go for a, he tried to go for a low ground throw that wasn't guaranteed, but that shows he definitely has knowledge of the game. Or at least knowledge of Tina and what she is good for. Yeah, exactly. All right, and here Hayate is coming back, though. He is not going to get grabbed by Tina. He is now in the lead with 2-1, sending her off the ledge. He does hold on to the cliff, however. Oh, and we got a throw break. He actually nice. turned it around on him. And, and how did he get that throw break? You know, that is something new. Yeah, right. And every time, you know, there's a cliffhanger that initiates as the defender, you know, you first try to tap guards so that you hold onto the ledge. When you pull yourself up, you have to guess between whether they're going to strike or whether they're going to try to throw you. And if they try to throw you, you have to tap throw yourself. If they're going to strike, you have to tap block. Oh, I see. Well, there we go. That was a very good play. Three and one. He kind of took that comfortably with a very nice finish with that beam falling into the car. You know, these danger zones that are in DOA, what do you think of that? You know, they has been there before in other DOAs, but they seem to have toned it up a bit. I mean, yeah, they, they, they've definitely toned it up. Um, before, you know, you were kind of limited. You had you had cool things like electrified walls and mm -hmm. walls that quote unquote exploded, but they didn't really blast you back or anything. Right. And now, you know, they're sending you flying through the air to, you know, get a relaunch into a juggle or just, just Now doing with all the power of... blows that actually allow you to to select where you're gonna send them into a danger zone. Yeah, so now that you have that, you know, you actually have kind of a variety in choice and you can bullet off that much. Um, it's it's really interesting to, to see these kind of danger zones. And, you know, the important thing to note is that these danger zones are not infinite. They are exhaustible. In the case of, like, the generator on uh, the stage scramble that explodes and sends you back up into the air, you can only do that once. It's still dangerous afterwards, but when you hit it, it only does a little bit more damage. You will never get that blast up into the air again. Right, so basically once you hit the generator and you've, you've destroyed it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that, that's it. You can only use it once. So, you know... A lot of players are going to be fighting towards who's going to get the danger zone uh, kind of... Kind of hit. positioning and sidestepping enough just to be able to throw their opponent into the wall. Exactly. They're, they're going to be fighting over who's going to use it first. Well, that is great to know something new about DOA 5. But here we go, heading into the second match between Martis and Black. Looks like Hayate is definitely going to be taking this one 1-0 one in favor of Martis. Yeah, I mean... Oh... I, I am a little worried about uh, Matt Black here. This is this isn't looking too good for him. He's gotten shoved into the corner here, and he's just taking the damage. He's getting an air throw off. This is oh, and that's you know I I have this pet peeve now where people they they hover over somebody who hasn't you know if if you're gonna hover over somebody that's on the ground you gotta block or know what to counter. Yeah, I mean by rule of thumb, anytime in DOA and even the little bit of virtual fighter that I played. Uh, it just seems to me when you've got wake-up kicks that have invincible frames like that that you, you cannot stuff, mm -hmm. you know, you've got to back up, you've got to try to bait them out, and if they throw out the kick, you know, you've got to try to punish it when it misses. Right, and it's definitely a lot safer to back up. That is guaranteed that you will not be hit by anything they do on wake-up. Right, now, just due to how slow these kicks are, it has been said that at the highest level of play, 
since there's only a low kick and a mid kick now for off the ground, it may very well be reactable. Mm -hmm. 